On September 8, 1907, St. Pope Pius X wrote in his encyclical on the doctrines of the modernists, Pascendi Dominici Crecis, that modernism is the synthesis of all heresies. St. Pope Paul VI, during his homily on the occasion of the ninth anniversary of his coronation, said, The smoke of Satan has entered the church. Four months before his death on October 9, 1958, Pope Pius XII evaluated the increasing peril of modernism and its close ideological cousins in the life of the church during his reign. In the speech given at a pastoral conference, he warned the bishops who attended the conference to ward off the roots of modern apostasy lay in scientific dialectical materialism, rationalism, illuminism, and laism, and Freemasonry which is the mother of them all. From the beginning of the 20th century until now, we have witnessed how the fruit of this ideology has wrecked havoc the traditional teaching and liturgy of the Church, particularly in the last 50 years after Vatican II. In order to understand how modernism has egregiously incapacitated the life of the Church, first we need to understand what heresy is and why modernism is the mother of all heresies. In this presentation, we will first trace the origin and development of modernism, then look at how it had already done great harm to the Church particularly in the last 50 years after Vatican II. Hopefully at the end of this presentation, we will understand how Pope Pius X reached his conclusion on modernism as the synthesis of all heresies. Fundamentally speaking, modernism is both a philosophical and art movement, which, along with cultural changes, arose from the wide-scale transformations in the Western society during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Among the factors that shaped modernism were the development of modern industrial societies and the rapid growth of cities, followed then by reactions to the horrors of World War I. It is peculiar to see that modernism rejected the certainty of Enlightenment thinking for the fact that it rejects any claim of a firmly founded thinking. This praxis leads modernism to a head-on collision with the theological and foundational nature of the doctrines of the Catholic Church. For in its transforming force to conform everything in its way to its fundamental principle, it run against the principle of revelatory constancy of the Catholic doctrine. Specifically, in a Catholic context, modernism refers to an understanding of scripture in light of scientific advances in archaeology, philosophy, the historical critical method, and other new developments of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and implicitly all that this might entail. Broadly speaking, however, it refers to a number of individual attempts to reconcile Roman Catholicism with modern culture. Catholic studies in the 17th and 18th centuries avoided the use of critical methodology because of its rationalist tendencies. In 1863, Ernest Renan, a philologist and historian who had trained for the priesthood before choosing a secular career, published Life of Jesus. His book described Jesus as a man, no doubt extraordinary, but only a man. The book was very popular, but cost him his chair of Hebrew at the College de France. 
Among Renan's most controversial ideas was that a miracle does not count as a historical event. Renan's Jesus is a man of simple piety and almost unimaginable charisma, whose main historical significance was his legion of followers. Writing in the Catholic Encyclopedia, Father Arthur Vermeers describes modernism thus, In general, we may say that modernism aims at that radical transformation of human thought in relation to God, man, the world, and life, here and hereafter, which was prepared by humanism and 18th century philosophy and solemnly promulgated at the French Revolution. The term came to prominence in Pope Pius X's 1907 encyclical Paschendi Dominici Gregis, which synthesizes and condemns modernism as embracing every heresy. The movement was influenced by Protestant theologians and clergy, starting with the Tubingen School in the mid-19th century. Pius charged that it was prominent in French and British intellectual circles, and to a lesser extent in Italy. Liberal Catholicism was a current of thought within the Catholic Church. It was influential in the 19th century and the first half of the 20th, especially in France. As liberal democracy and the industrial economy sprouted throughout the developing European nation states in the aftermath of the French Revolution, it is largely identified with French political theorists, influenced in part by a similar contemporaneous movement in Belgium. Engelbert Sturks, Archbishop of Mechelen, Belgium, for example, had managed to take advantage of the new freedoms to completely reorganize his archdiocese, establishing schools, colleges, monasteries, charities, and minor seminaries. Liberals in France and in Belgium saw no conflict between Catholicism and liberal reform. They advocated for an enlarged suffrage, separation of church and state, and universal freedom of conscience, instruction, assembly, and the press. In August 1832, Pope Gregory XVI issued the encyclical Mirari Vos on liberalism and religious indifferentism. He attacked religious indifferentism, which was defined as the opinion that one religion is as good as another, which he saw as the basis for the argument for the liberty of conscience. He also denounced secret society that sought to overturn the legitimate governments of the Italian states and the freedom to publish or distribute any writings indiscriminately. A political theorist priest, Felicité Robert de Lemonnet, under attack from French conservatives, issued in 1834 the book Words of a Believer, in which he denounced all authority, civil as well as ecclesiastical. This work marked Lemonnet's return to a Christian socialism that inspired a whole generation. His radical ideas reflected an overlap of Catholic and socialist ideas that can be traced back to the 1820s. The experience of the popes during the recent revolutions, widespread unrest in the papal states, the increasing temporal power of anti-Catholic forces, and the erosion of spiritual allegiance predisposed Gregory XVI to issue a second encyclical Singulari Nos of June 1834, condemning Lemonet's idea. Pope Pius IX, in December 8, 1864, issued the encyclical Quanta Cura, decrying what he considered significant errors afflicting the modern age. 
The encyclical condemns certain propositions, such as the people's will manifested by what is called public opinion, constitutes a supreme law, free from all divine and human control, and that religious orders have no legitimate reason for being permitted. Some of these condemnations were aimed at anti-clerical governments in various European countries which were in the process of secularizing education and taking over Catholic schools as well as oppressing religious orders and confiscating their property. Attached to the encyclical was syllabus of errors listing propositions which had been condemned in previous papal documents. The government of France briefly tried to suppress the circulation of the encyclical and the syllabus within its borders. It forbade priests to explain the syllabus from the pulpit, though newspapers were allowed to discuss it from a secular point of view. The government propositions countering the syllabus were The prophecies and miracles recorded in the sacred scriptures are the fiction of poets and the mysteries of the Christian faith. The Old and the New Testaments contain mythical inventions and Jesus Christ is himself a myth. The method and principle by which the old scholastic doctors cultivated theology are no longer suitable to the demands of our times and to the progress of the sciences. The First Vatican Council was held from December 1869 to October 1870. It was convoked to deal with the issue of the rising influence of rationalism, liberalism, and materialism. In anticipation of defining the doctrine of papal infallibility during the Council, a number of bishops expressed the opinion that the time was inopportune. Ignaz von Dollinger, professor of church history at Munich, led a movement in Germany hostile to the Council. He had invited 100 theologians to meet and discuss the question which the liberals had raised in France. In his address on the past and future of the Catholic theology, Dalinger advocated for greater academic freedom from the dogmatic constitution on the Catholic faith, which defends the fundamental principle of Christianity against the errors of modern rationalism materialism and atheism. On the other dogmatic constitution addressing the primacy of the Pope, he rejected the idea stating that it is not valid unless confirmed by the secular power. In 1878, Pope Leo XIII had encouraged the study of history and archaeology and in 1887, he also did the same for the study of the natural sciences. He opened the Vatican Observatory in 1891. He did this in response to the modernist trend to undermine the authority of sacred scriptures. He needs his own troop of trained experts to advise him. In 1893, with Providentissimus Deus, Pope Leo gave the first formal authorization for the use of critical methods in biblical scholarship. Hence it is most proper that professors of sacred scriptures and theologians should master those tongues in which the sacred books were originally written and have a knowledge of natural science. Pope Leo recommended that the student of scripture be first given a sound grounding in the interpretations of the fathers, such as Tertullian, Cyprian, Hilary, Ambrose, Leo the Great, Gregory the Great, Augustine, and Jerome, and understand what they interpreted literally, and what allegorically, and know what they lay down as belonging to faith, and what is opinion. 
at the turn of the 20th century, the official Catholic attitude to the study of Holy Scriptures was one of cautious advance, and at the same time of a growing appreciation of what had promised for the future. In 1902, Pope Leo XIII instituted the Pontifical Biblical Commission, which was to adapt Roman Catholic biblical studies to modern scholarship and to protect scripture against attacks. Pope Pius X, who succeeded Leo in 1903, opposed both the aims and ideas of modernism, which he viewed as an import of secular errors, incompatible with Catholic dogma. In July 1907, the Holy Office published the document Lamentabili Sane Ex Situ, a sweeping condemnation which distinguished 65 propositions as modernist heresies. In September of the same year, Pius X promulgated encyclical Pacendi Dominici Gregis, which formulated a sweeping synthesis of modernism and popularized the term itself. The encyclical condemned the movement as embracing every heresy and effectively expelled it from the Catholic Church. In 1910, Pope Pius X introduced an anti-modernist oath to be taken by all Catholic bishops, priests, and academic teachers of religion to ensure enforcement of these decisions. Monsignor Umberto Benigni organized, through his personal contacts with, with theologians, an unofficial group of censors who would report to him those thought to be teaching condemned doctrine. This group was called the Sodalicium Pianum. Its methods often hindered rather than helped the Church in its combat with modernism. In the period between World War II and the Cold War, Reginald Garrigo Lagrange, OP, was the torchbearer of Orthodox Thomism against modernism. He was a French professor of philosophy and theology at the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, Angelicum. He is commonly held to have influenced the decision in 1942 to place the book Une École de Théologie La Sol Qua for Maria Dominique Chenu OP on the Vatican's Index of Forbidden Books. Since Pope St. Paul VI, most church authorities have largely dropped the term modernism, preferring instead, in the interest of precision, to call beliefs such as secularism, liberalism, or relativism by their several names. The older term has, however, remained current in the usage of many traditionalist Catholics and conservative critics within the Church. Modernism in the Church may be described under the following broad headings. It can be understood as a rationalistic approach to the Bible sought to interpret by focusing on the text itself as a prelude prior to considering what the Church Fathers had traditionally taught about it. It can also be understood as any secularism and Enlightenment ideals to be applied into changing the traditional teachings of the Church. Philosophers such as Kant and Bergson inspired the mainstream of modernist thought. Modernists attempted to synthesize the vocabularies, epistemologies, metaphysics and other features of certain modern systems of philosophy with Catholicism in much the same way as the scholastic order had earlier attempted to synthesize Platonic and Aristotelian philosophy with the Church's teachings. As more naturalistic and scientific studies of history appeared, a way of thinking called historicism arose which suggested that ideas are conditioned by the age in which they are expressed. 
Thus, modernists generally believe that most dogma or teachings were novelties which arose because of specific circumstances obtaining at given points in its history. Therefore, the teachings of the Church, which its members are required to believe, can evolve over time. This evolution is not only in their expression, but also in their substance, which is to remain the same for all time. With this core idea that doctrines can evolve, it was possible for the modernists to believe that both the old teachings of the Church and her new, seemingly contradictory teachings were correct. In another word, each had its time and place. This system of thought allows almost any type of new belief which the modernists in question might wish to introduce. And for this reason, modernism was labeled by Pope Pius X as the synthesis of all heresies. <laughs>